Hey, we're back with another real life example from a customer or a student in our free Adobe Illustrator course. That's right, we teach you how to use Adobe Illustrator for free. We have an online course you can go through your own time, your own pace. Um, but sometimes there are some things that as you get to going and started using Illustrator, you're like, hey, I have a real life example and I did take the course, but I'm struggling to uh, execute my new skills and these real life examples. And so uh, we have one of those today. This is sent in from a customer who said, hey, I, I want to make a vector object like this low res. You can see how blurry it is. Um, graduation cap. I, I want it to look like that, um, but I need to, to, to make it vector. And so I tried with the pen tool, uh, but this is what I got, and it doesn't quite look like that. Can you walk me through it and uh, show me how you did it using Illustrator? And so we're going to do that today. Again, if you have real life examples, send them to us. We'll do the same thing. We'll walk you through how to um, recreate it. Now, I'm going to do a couple of different techniques here um, to show you how to achieve this. One of the things I like to do sometimes when I'm trying to get a radius, um, I like to use the ellipse tool to create my radius rather than the pen tool. Um, and sometimes it's just easier to, to click and drag it around and try to get it to match the curve of something. So I'm going to select and get that radius to match the curve. I'm just going to hold down shift and move this down and now I want to make this um, we're going to make a black spot color call it black spot make it a spot color uh, we'll go to the CMYK slider not lab CMYK make it black click OK now we have a black fill on there so this top curve is like the the, the, the curve on my um, uh, cap. Now I'm going to take my pen tool and I'm just going to draw some lines to match these lines. I'm going to click down here. We're going to create a little polygon shape. Really, really simple. Click over here. And we made a polygon. All right. Now I'm going to put my polygon over here. Let's make sure it lines up exactly. I might need to shift my. Yeah, looks pretty good. So I'm probably going over here. I'm going to duplicate my uh, ellipse, and I'm going to add a stroke to this one. So we need to uh, stroke it. I'm going to create a new color just so it stands out. Um, this is going to be my deletion color, so uh, it'll be a knockout. I'm going to make it magenta so it's easy to see, and I'm going to make that stroke nice and wide because I'm making it five points. Our minimum print tolerance, so the ink doesn't run together, is two points. Making it five gives me plenty of space. So I'm going to add that stroke to this. And then um, I want to select this. And I want to add it, the same stroke to it. So I'm actually going to duplicate. Oops. Undo that. Copy, paste. So now I have two of these. And I'm going to line this one up following the curve. And then I'll just turn my opacity down so I can see where I'm working. Turn the opacity down on that. Select my other object. We're going to make it match uh, the curve of the hat here. And I'll resize it a little bit. And again, we'll adjust our opacity down so we can see what we're working with. I'm just going to adjust my shape to get it to follow the curve that I want it to follow. So as we resize and reposition it, we'll get it to follow that curve there. And you want that pink stroke line to be right on the edge of where we're going, where we're working. Now I'm going to take that polygon, I'm going to bring it right back up here, place it where I had it. I'm going to go back to my layers menu, and I just want to lock this bottom layer, what I'm trying to match. So by placing this lock here, it makes it, I can't select it. Select everything here. We're going to turn the opacity back up to uh, 100. And we need to adjust the order of some of our layers. So I'm going to bring that one forward, um, hit the command bracket. You can also just select it and move them up and down here to adjust the order of them. So I'm going to bring my, my layers in the order that I want them. I'm going to put my uh, vector object in there. And now I'm going to select everything. I'm going to go to Object, Flatten Transparency. I want to convert these strokes to outlines, and so we want to make sure that 
all strokes or converted outlines, I click OK. And now I have these vector objects uh, all overlapping each other. I'm going to go to my Pathfinder window. If you don't know what that is, window, Pathfinder. And I want to use the divide object. So hit divide. And basically it acts like a cookie cutter. Wherever those intersections of, of vector lines and points intersect, it deletes. And now we can come in and we can delete some stuff that we don't need. So I'm going to select this, delete it. I'm going to select this bottom pink. And we're going to delete a bunch of stuff that we don't need here until we get down to that curve with a cap. Select that. Delete it. I'm going to select all my pink because I don't need any of that. So I go to select, same, fill color. And I'll find all the pink and delete it. I'm going to find my uh, areas of black here, delete those, grab and select, delete. All right, now I'm going to click and drag and see what else we got. There's a little uh, no fill, no stroke area up here. So I'm just going to go to select, same, fill color, see if there's any more. Uh, I'm good. Actually, it's filled with black, so I don't want to delete that. Let's zoom in here. I'm going to get this little object that I had left over. And now I got this vector shape that sort of that matches up with... Uh, my blurry low res version. Um, I can turn the opacity down a little bit on this. And if I want to use my direct select tool, I can select specific points and I can move it around to make sure it matches up perfectly. So make any minor adjustments that you have. But I have this nice curve that's set up for me uh, by using those shapes. I'm going to turn the uh, select this again, I'll turn the opacity back up to 100%. And I'm just going to select this and move it out of the way. Um, and I'm going to show you a different way that you could have attacked this, right? So if that was complex, you're like, whoa, that's tough. Okay, well, it's fine. We'll use a pen tool. Um, so I get the pen tool. I'm going to create a new layer here, and we're going to trace it. So I want to click, draw a straight line. I want to put, when I'm always working on a curve, I usually try to put the, um, the point in the center of the curve. Click and drag. Have it follow that curve. Click the leading. I click the center of it to take the leading handle off. Come back here, click and drag again. Make it follow that, that nice gradual arc of the curve. Click our point, come down here to the center. Click, ah, now I got an issue where I can't see what I'm tracing. Easy to fix that. You go to your transparency window, you take the opacity, you knock it down so that you can trace it. I'm gonna come back here to about the center, click and drag. Again, select the point that I just made to take the leading handle off. Click and drag again. Let's find it, match up that curve nicely. And then I'm going to select it, come back to my opacity, knock it back up to 100, zoom out here, and I got two shapes. All right, this one and that one. Uh, they look pretty much uh, identical to one another. I just achieved it in two different ways. It's up to you how you go about it. Uh, we use the one that we live trace, or the no, no, didn't live trace, that we pen tool trace because uh, we're pros now with Illustrator. And we're going to come back and we want to pen tool this, um, this polygon shape that we're going to deal with here. So um, I'm going to uh, select here, uh, make a point there make these nice square edges, spread that up, follow along here, point there, point there, and then I'm going to make it go to the back in the order, so I want to put it below my uh, other path, so I move it, move it down. I want to select that path that I just made, and I'm going to put a stroke on this one. This would be another deletion stroke. Again, we're going to make it five points. Make it nice and thick. Um, actually, I'm going to make it four because visually it looks uh, looks good at, at four. And then I want to make sure that my stroke, again, by going to my stroke uh, panel, is aligned to the outside. So you don't want to delete from the inside of any of the objects. You want to align it to the outside. So we're going to select both of these shapes. Um, you can click and drag and select them all if you want to like that. Um, I have them all selected. I go to Object, Flatten Transparency. Again, we need to convert that stroke into a, an outline, a shape. So uh, flatten that, 
and now my Pathfinder window, I hit divide. If you don't flatten it and hit your divide, it's not going to work the way you expect it to work. Um, oftentimes you skip that flattening step. So now I have these divided. I can come back to my direct select tool. Again, I don't need any of this pink. So select a portion of the pink, go to select, same fill color, helps me find it all and delete it in one shot. I don't need this little free floating thing down here. I'm gonna select it and delete it. And now I'm gonna click and drag this up. You can see I've got some division here that I need to clean up and I can do that by merging these together. And now I have a nice uh, clean vector line around my cap following that curve. If I want to tighten it up a little bit, um, you can do that just by selecting this and adding a black stroke to it <coughs> on the outside um, and increasing it. You just want to make sure you don't increase it so much that you don't have a two point gap between your two areas. Not having a two point gap there will cause the ink to run together, to merge together, and uh, not print well. So you want to avoid that. All right, now we need to add the tassel. So we got this guy down here, and that is uh, super blurry, hard to see. And so um, we're gonna have to rely on our art abilities here and do the best we can uh, tracing this. First, I'm just gonna take the rectangle tool and we're going to just click and drag this down. We're gonna make a rectangle. I'm gonna take the stroke off of here. I don't need a stroke. Um, and I'm gonna click and drag it. I'm gonna rotate it slightly to make it come in on a curve. All right, so that's the start. I'm gonna use my ellipse tool. I'm gonna to create a circle. Hold down shift to make it a perfect circle. Or you can let go of shift and click and drag and we'll make it, you know, an oblong shape, it'll follow it. So do that, move it up, center it up there. And now I wanna create uh, this, actually I need to make it a little higher, my tassel. I wanna create this effect down here of the tassels. And I'm just going to use my pen tool, and we're going to um, start by clicking. Uh, we'll drag, click and drag just to make it have a little bit of a flare. Uh, click here. And you notice I'm not um, using the click the point again to take the leading handle off. I want it to have sort of a natural flowing curve to it. And then we'll click back up here. And we'll, dude, I missed my spot. Click here, curve it, and then we'll close it back up. Now I go to my handle and look at it, and I zoom in and go, oh, how does that look? Do I love it? Not really. So I'm gonna use my direct selection tool, click here, let's find some of these points, adjust some of these anchors, and we'll move some things around to adjust the look uh, and feel of this a little bit to get it to where we're happy with uh, how it looks as a, as a tassel move some of these points and some of these anchors around to get it looking like a tassel. Zoom back out of here. See if we like that. I actually like uh, what you did in the original a little bit. So I got too much of a, of a divot here. I'm going to sort of flatten this out a little bit. This curves right. Map. So now we have a nice clean tassel. I'm going to actually select it all and just slide it in a little bit. Match up. So well, we like how that looks and we now have this nice vector. Now um, it looks like uh, you were trying to make it fill in here uh, with a curve and again um, an easy way to, 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 to get that to fill in is uh, with the ellipsal. So rather than trying to use the pen tool to do that, I like to use the ellipsal to find uh, something that matches that curve and uh, placing it in there. I'll tool select it for my selection tool. And then just adjusting my ellipse to where it meets the curve that I want. I can rotate it a little bit 
So a little rotation will help get its positioning right. Nudge where it's going to go. If you were trying to create something that was a different um, color to look like it was a hollow shadow. So I'm going to just select these um, and we're going to make these blue just as an example. So whenever I see YK slider, we're going to make a light blue. That's black through it. All right, so we got a blue here. I want to make sure my stroke is also blue. So I'll select that blue. And now if I make this fill here darker, um, I'll create a new fill color. We'll make it a nice dark blue. Okay. okay. And now I have uh, a dark blue to go with my, my light blue and create some contrast. And again, um, I can come back here and if I want to do actually add the, the, the dark blue stroke to this and make that stroke bigger out on the outside and then make this um, uh, ellipse match this. Match the curve here a little bit. Zoom in so I can make it fit. Just click and drag it to where the fulcrum of the ellipse hits the line. Zoom out there a little bit and you go, okay, cool. I got a little sharp point I need to fix here. Um, what you can do is select this point, pull it up a little bit, down, there you go. Zoom out, and so if you wanted to have that kind of effect so that you see the, the inside of it, you can. Uh, again, I can do, um, you know, some more things now that I have this in a, in a vector state, um, or I can just Command-Z, undo all this, and work my way back to where I was as a simple one color vector. This is now a nice vector object, clean, ready to race. It's infinitely scalable. So when you zoom in on this, look how blurry that guy is. Look how nice and crisp this one is. So now we have a vector object, ready to race. Again, if you have questions about how to take what you have, turn it into a print ready vector, clean illustrator print, We'd love to show you how to do that. Just send us your example. It's really helpful when you can give us uh, some, some examples of the effect you're trying to create, the file you have in the current state, a little description of what you're trying to achieve. And we'd love to show you how you can achieve what you want to do uh, in creating print-ready artwork using Illustrator.